Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So a big question a lot of people have when it comes to the Model 3 and electric cars in general is how to charge them when you're away from home. So that's exactly what we're going to cover in today's video. Let's get started. When it comes to the Model 3, there are four primary ways that you can charge the car when you're away from home. You can do it through a supercharging station, through an ESB charge point, through a third party charging station, or through a Tesla destination charger. So let's start with the Tesla supercharging station. Supercharging stations are part of a global network of charging stations made specifically for use by Tesla vehicles. You can find them by simply looking for red lightning bolt icons in the built-in navigation system in your Tesla. If you tap on one, you'll see an outline of how many supercharger stalls are available, if any are occupied or out of order, and what charging rate you can expect. You'll also see the pricing for how much it will cost per kilowatt hour to charge your car. Prior to arriving at a supercharger, your car will display a message to say it's preparing for supercharging. This means that the car will ensure that the battery pack is at the most optimal temperature to provide the fastest possible charging rate. When you arrive at the supercharger, you'll notice that there are two different charging cables. One is a standard Type 2 connection, which is designed to support charging of the Tesla Model S and Model X vehicles, while the other is a CCS Type 2 connector, which is designed to support the Model 3 and the future Model Y. So this is the connector we'll be using to charge our Model 3 today. To open the charge port door, simply press the button at the top of the charging cable and the door will open automatically. Once plugged in, you'll see the charge indicator light turn blue, which means the car is preparing to charge, and then it'll turn flashing green, which means it's charging. If you sit back inside the car, you'll see a charging display which lets you know how long it will take for the car to reach the specified charge level. You can adjust the charge level by clicking the set limit button and then dragging the slider along the battery until you reach a level that suits you. If you're wondering why you'd ever want to set a charge limit and not just let the battery charge fully to 100%, then there are three main reasons. Number one is that once the battery reaches an 80% state of charge, then the charge rate decreases significantly. This means that you'll be waiting a much longer period of time for the battery to charge fully. Number two is that an 80 or 90% state of charge is generally more than enough to get you to where you need to go. And if you're paying for charging at a supercharger, you might as well save yourself the cash by not charging the remaining 20%. This also means that your car will be finished charging more quickly, meaning that the superchargers will become less congested. And number three, charging the battery to 100% on a daily basis puts extra strain on the battery cells, which may lead to increased levels of battery degradation over time. This actually forms the basis for why the last 20% of charge always takes the longest. And that's because the battery management system must ensure that the high levels of power within the battery pack are dealt with in a way that does not end up damaging the battery cells. As superchargers are typically located next to service stations, you can feel free to get out of the car and go to do some shopping or get a quick bite to eat. Since the charge cable is locked into the charge port while you're away, you don't need to worry about people coming over to the car and deliberately pulling out the charge port without your permission. As the charge nears completion, you'll receive a notification from the Tesla app on your smartphone to let you know that the car is nearly charged and to return to your vehicle as soon as possible so as to avoid any overstay fees. Overstay fees are used as a form of penalty to discourage people from parking at supercharging stalls for longer than necessary, so as to ensure that the stalls remain free for those people who need them. If you're wondering how much the overstay fee is, then you can check this by clicking on the supercharger icon on the map. To stop charging, you have a variety of options. You can unlock the charge port through the Tesla app and then unplug the charger from the car, or you can click the stop charging button on the touchscreen and then click the unlock charge button and remove the charger from the car. Or you can click the button on the charger to unlock the charger and remove it from the car. Or you can use the key fob and hold the button at the back of the key fob to unlock the charge port and remove the charger. One key advantage of using superchargers is that they have a much higher power output when compared to the public fast chargers offered by the ESB and other providers. For comparison, most of the ESB fast chargers have a maximum power output of 50 kilowatts, whereas the current supercharging stations have a maximum power output of more than double that at 130 kilowatts. All of this means that if you charge your car at a supercharging station, it will charge a lot faster than it would at an ESB fast charger. In terms of how you pay for the superchargers, Tesla simply charge the debit or credit card which you use to place the order for your car originally. Now that we've covered superchargers, next up are the ESB public chargers. These chargers typically come in two types, D 
DC fast chargers with a maximum power output of 50 kilowatts and AC slow chargers with a maximum power output of 22 kilowatts. The AC slow chargers can typically be found in supermarket or shopping centre car parks or beside on-street parking in cities and these are currently totally free to use but the ESB do have plans to change this later in 2020. You can also find these chargers by searching through the built-in navigation system on your Tesla but unfortunately this does not display whether they're currently in use or out of order. To use these chargers you'll need to download the ESB eCar Connect app on your smartphone and set up an account. The app has its own mapping system, which in addition to showing you where the chargers are, will also show you if they're currently in use or out of order, along with the maximum power output and charge connector type. When you arrive at one of these charging stations, you'll have to plug in using the charge cable provided with your Tesla. Simply plug one end into the charger and the other end into the charge port. To open the charge port without having a button on the end of the charge connector like you would have on a supercharger, then you can simply gently press on the outside of the charge port door and it'll open automatically. You'll then need to initiate the charging session either through the app by finding the charger at your current location and swiping across to start the charge, or by tapping the ESB charge card against the charger. If you're wondering where you can get the charge card, you can simply order it directly from the ESB website. Again, while the car is charging, you can keep track of the charging status via the touchscreen. You'll notice that the charge rate when compared to the supercharger is considerably slower, but since these chargers are totally free to use, then there has to be a compromise somewhere. One question a lot of people ask about charging at these public charging stations is whether or not the parking is free. Unfortunately, the short answer is actually no. In most cases, whether you're charging or not, you'll still have to pay for the parking just like everyone else. However, the decision is ultimately up to the local county council, so this can vary from county to county. Moving on to the ESB fast chargers, these look considerably larger than their slower counterparts and typically feature about three different types of charging connector to suit a variety of different electric vehicles. In the case of the Model 3, you'll want to use the CCS Type 2 connector, which is the largest connector of the three. Again, the charging process is quite similar to the slow chargers. You can either initiate the charge via the app or tap the charge card on the reader, select your charging connector, in this case CCS, and connect the charge cable. The two key differences between the fast charger and the standard public chargers are one, that the fast charger charges the car a lot more quickly, and two, you have to pay to use the fast charger. At the moment, the ESB have a two-tier system for payment. There's a subscription model where you can pay a five euro monthly subscription and then pay 29 cent per kilowatt hour to charge your car which ironically is the same price as using a Tesla supercharger. Or you have a pay-as-you-go model where you pay a rate of 33 cent per kilowatt hour. Personally, I use the pay-as-you-go model since I do most of my charging at work. To pay, you can simply add your debit card to the app and either top up manually as needed or use an automatic top up. One thing to note about the ESB fast chargers is that they do have an overstay fee of five euros if your charging session lasts longer than 45 minutes, irrespective of whether your car has finished charging or not. As you approach the 45 minute mark, the ESB app will give you several notifications to say that you're reaching the time limit and you'll be charged an additional 5 euros. So those are the ESB chargers. Next, we have the third party chargers. There are a variety of third party charging companies in Ireland, including EasyGo, GoCharge, Ionity, ChargePoint and AppleGreen, to name but a few. Of these, Ionity and AppleGreen are perhaps the most interesting. Apple Green have a small network of 50 kilowatt fast chargers and these are 100% free to use for now. On the other hand, Ionity is a new charging network developed as a joint venture between BMW, Ford, Mercedes and Volkswagen to provide super fast charging across Europe. Their chargers are capable of supporting a power output of 350 kilowatts, which as you now know is about seven times more powerful than the ESV fast chargers. However, one thing to note about this is that there are actually only two cars available on the market right now which are capable of supporting a charge rate greater than 250 kilowatts, and those are the Model 3 Long Range and Performance and the Porsche Taycan. If you're wondering how you can find and use any of these chargers, then there are a variety of websites and apps available that can help you find them, such as ChargeMap, ZapMap and PlugShare, which display the locations of where most of these chargers can be found, and typically each third party charging provider has their own app where you can find and pay for the use of their chargers. Finally, just before I finish up, Tesla also have a range of destination chargers. 
Destination chargers are typically found in hotel or restaurant car parks and are actually exactly the same type of charger that you could buy yourself from Tesla and install at your home. As a result, the maximum power output you can expect from one of these chargers is 22 kilowatts. However, the actual output is limited by the onboard charger on your Tesla, meaning that if you have a long range or performance Model 3, you can expect a maximum charge rate of up to 11 kilowatts. And if you have a standard range Model 3, you can expect a maximum charge rate of 7.7 .7 kilowatts. So that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Until then, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Tesla videos and I'll see you in the next one.